Today on Internet Marketing Pro, we have a special presentation for you that was recorded live at the Agents of Change, the digital marketing conference that took place on September 20th, 2013 here in Portland, Maine, put on by Rich Woods and Flight Media or Flight.com. It was a fantastic conference, and I have to highly recommend that uh, if you get a chance to go to this conference in person next year, uh, to please do so. But if you missed it this year, you haven't really missed it because you can still tune in virtually and see the entire conference at your fingertips whenever you like and consume whatever you like when you like. And if you'd like to do so, you need to go to a website called agentsofchangecon.com. That's agentsofchangecon.com. You can also reference it in the description of this video because there's a hot link there and there's also a promotional code. It's IPRO. That's IPRO. And you should be able to get a 25% discount uh, for purchasing access to the virtual conference. So today I am going to cover a uh, guest speaker that was there. He is a phenomenal person. I got a chance to hang out and meet him in person. I've interviewed him here before in April. I'm glad I got him before he got too popular because now he's so backed up for the next three months, uh, it's hard to get an interview with him. So his name is John Lee Dumas, and he's the founder and host of Entrepreneur on Fire, a podcast that interviews today's most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. Entrepreneur on Fire is a top-ranked business podcast generating over a half a million unique downloads a month in over 145 countries. And his lineup includes people like Shark Tank's Barbara Cochran, Seth Godin, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vanderchuk, Guy Kawasaki, and hundreds more. All the magic happens at eofire.com. That's EO fire.com so so come check it out and so today's topic that john's going to cover here live is podcasting six months to six figures a podcaster's journey and prior to the launch of his podcast john lee dubens literally had no online experience at all and when he launched entrepreneur on fire on september 22nd 2012 Entrepreneur on Fire immediately rose to the top of the iTunes charts and has remained there ever since. And within the first 12 months, John has built a massive audience of over a half a million unique downloads for the month of September and has opened up multiple five-figure monthly revenue streams, namely over $36,000 in monthly sponsorship revenue, $13,000 plus in monthly recurring revenue for his 100-person membership mastermind, Fire Nation Elite, and his third and soon-to-be five-figure revenue generator, Podcaster's Paradise, which launches October 24th and will be an interactive community for podcasters. In this session, you will learn the amazing launch strategy that he used to generate such a massive audience and income. So be ready to take your podcasting efforts to the next level, and of course, prepare to ignite. I also like to commend John for his recent mention and uh, feature in Time Magazine this month for being one of the preeminent podcasters in the world. His show is currently ranked number two on iTunes. That is absolutely amazing. Congratulations, John. Broadcasting from the Great Northwoods Lake region of Southern Maine, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. I'm your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to our Internet Marketing Pro and EasyInGenerator.com podcast show. Our shows will cover how to grow your business as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, entrepreneurism, and preeminent professional internet marketers. Thank you for tuning into our show as we begin this adventure together exploring many great things to come. Now, let's cover a quick few announcements before we get started. Like I always begin my shows, I really like to show my personal appreciation for all the feedback that we've been getting from you and what a difference it makes in motivating me to put these shows out and continually think of the next subject matter that we can explore together. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to the show and take it with you wherever you go on your mobile device on either YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher Smart Radio, Zune, GeekCast, and many other syndicates. And if you like our show and find it resourceful, please do your social network a favor and share, like, post, leave a comment to our show. Also, be sure to visit ezinegenerator.com to become a free member of our highly resourceful total online marketing presence community to get exclusive access to thousands of quality marketing resources at your fingertips. And finally, be sure to review our past archive shows on iTunes, Stitcher Smart Radio, YouTube, and Zune. They're free for you to consume all you 
you want. Now, let's get down to business and see what John has to share with us. Hi guys, it is so great to be back in the state of Maine. I am born and raised in this wonderful state. It's been the first 18 years of my life here. and It's been actually the last two years, 2011 to 2013, right here in Portland, so that was wonderful as well. And I currently reside in San Diego just for a little bit, but Maine is always the way life should be, so I'm sure I'll find my way back here. And unfortunately, we do have uh, some technical difficulties, shocking, but there's supposed to be a clicker, which isn't working, so I found Nathan O'Leary, who's a fellow presenter here. He's going to be my manual clicker, and I think this actually might work out because he's better looking than that piece of metal. Over there. <laughs> Same amount of hair, though. <laughs> so this presentation is six months to six figures a podcaster's journey and what I'm really going to run down is how I've taken Entrepreneur on Fire the podcast specifically in six months and we'll go through that first but then we'll also take it for the full year because Entrepreneur on Fire's one year anniversary is actually in two days so I'm not even at the one year mark yet which is kind of one thing that I really want to impress upon everybody in the audience here today is that Things, if you really do go at things with passion, with drive, with focus, they truly can happen quickly for you. So, Nate, let's start off here. A little animation. <laughs> One thing I do want to start off with, because this is really important to me, and I do quotes on my show, Entrepreneur on Fire, to start things off. So I am a big success and just mantra quote kind of guy. And one quote that I really do love from Maya Angelou is, I've learned that people will forget what you did People will forget what you said, and people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So I have no illusions of grandeur here. I know that you will forget almost everything that I've said today, and you'll forget everything that I've done. But if you can just remember or maybe take away one thing that I made you feel today and take action off of that, then I'm going to consider this entire presentation a success. So let's go forward from here. So how do I really want you as the audience to feel today. I really want to feel that, I really want you guys to feel like building your audience, taking what you are doing right now or what your dreams and desires of doing is possible and taking action and building up and off and forward from that is really possible. I want you to feel that way walking out of here because I was here a year ago today in this, off, in this very auditorium in one of these seats actually, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. And I didn't really know if I felt that way, but I, I wish I did. It would have made the first couple of weeks and months a little less rocky. So I really want you guys to feel that walking out of here. So just again, to really brush over who I am, go ahead again. I'm John Lee Dumas, one more time, the founder and host of Entrepreneur on Fire, which is a top-ranked business podcast. And I interview uh, some of the most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs around the world seven days a week. So that is 365 days a year. I have one that went live again today and tomorrow. And even on Christmas, there'll be one that goes live. And we'll talk about how and why podcasting is great for one of those reasons, because it really allows you to set schedules up. So I'm home for two weeks here in Maine, but things are still progressing at a very normal, very natural pace with Entrepreneur on Fire. And you can do that in the podcasting niche and in many other niches as well. One more click. So I have interviewed one more. I have interviewed some amazing guests. Um, Chris Brogan's here today, and some other people I'm sure you guys do recognize. I have built a very large audience. I am currently generating over 500,000 unique downloads in over 145 countries as we speak, and that's on a monthly basis. And so that's really the power of iTunes, of podcasting, more than anything else. It's a medium that people are really flocking to on a daily basis, and. So many more people are discovering podcasts on a daily basis for the very first time, and that's one thing that's really exciting for a lot of reasons. Through, through Entrepreneur on Fire, I've also created multiple five-figure monthly incomes, and I'm going to talk about each one of those income streams with Entrepreneur on Fire and how that's not necessarily podcast-specific, but it's more audience-specific, because that's really one thing that I want to focus on today is the audience, because not everybody in here wants, needs, or is going to become a podcaster. It's a great medium, and I would support anybody that wants to go on that adventure. It's a great opportunity, but it's not something you have to do. It's more about the audience, and, and podcasting is one way to do that. 
And again, as I talked to you uh, just very briefly prior about where I was one year ago today, it was in these seats. Entrepreneur on Fire was still just something I wanted to do. It was a vision that I had. I, I knew that I wanted to create a seven day a week podcast, but I hadn't yet done so. I was at, I was at this very conference sitting in these very seats and I was wondering would Entrepreneur on Fire succeed when it did get live, when it did go on iTunes. I didn't know. So I do have five keys to success that I'd love to share today and just go through in the next five, Nate. Taking action, focus, determination, consistency, and the willingness to fail daily. So if every one of those is very important for different reasons, and I'm going to go through all of them right now. But the reason why I really want to focus on these key points, because again, podcasting is a great area and a great venue and a great platform to launch your brand, to add to your demographic, to do a bunch of things. But it doesn't have to be for everybody. There are so many different avenues that you can go down. And I want to share a couple of those as well. But first, as far as taking action, you really need to learn your craft. Whichever avenue you are going to go down, first and foremost, you really want to learn your craft and really focus in on that craft that you're going to get into. For me, that was, was podcasting. Up until June of 2012, I had done nothing but consume podcasts. Now it's going to become a seven day a week podcast producer, so I had to flip the tables and start learning how to podcast. I literally had no idea. So I had to go out there and really start taking time on a daily basis to really focus and reach out to people in my industry who were experts in this field that could really help me go down this road. <clears throat> so focus. There might be a couple of people who have heard Entrepreneur on Fire in the audience here today, so I'd love if somebody from Fire Nation <laughs> could share with me what the word focus means or what the acronym for focus. I have this guy. Um, focus uh, or uh, the acronym. Focus on, on one course until success. On one, follow one course until success. <laughs> Both were great. So my favorite acronym that I, I share very often, whenever one of my guests just stumbles over the word focus and they drive onto something, I like to always go back to that word because I really look at it as one reason why Entrepreneur on Fire specifically is successful as a podcast because. I truly focus. When you start down your venture, when you get really passionate about whatever you're going to pursue as an entrepreneur, you start going down all these different rabbit holes and uncovering all these exciting things. And you know, it might be Pinterest one day, or Instagram, or it might be video blogging, or all these different things are just always coming up. And there's always going to be new things every single day. And I call it the bright, shiny object syndrome. And it's so prevalent. It's always there. And for me, I'm always being pulled in different directions, saying, oh, that'd be so fun to do. I'd love to do that. That could be so great for my brands. But the bright, shiny object syndrome will be your downfall. Because if you really want to dominate a niche, if you really want to be known as the authority figure in that area, you have to focus on You have to become that expert. That Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours is only going to come if you actually take the time to sit down, focus on that, and become the expert in that area. So I force myself to ignore the things around me, or I hire virtual assistants to take care of the different things that I knew would take my focus away, like the social media, like things along those lines, and just to focus on what was my, what was my main goal <clears throat> and my main vision, which is Entrepreneur on Fire, the seven-day-a-week podcast. So determination, and this is tough. This is really difficult for all entrepreneurs because you're not the first person when you're an entrepreneur all the time to actually be going down an, an area and to be going down a niche or to be getting into a certain category. I wasn't the first podcaster that was interviewing other entrepreneurs, and I will not be the last. And I had some great mentors and some great people in my mastermind, which I'll get to in a minute here, and they gave me some incredible feedback, and they said, John, Seven day a week show, nobody will ever, ever listen seven days a week. And John, seven day a week show, like you'll burn out. Like you will not be able to actually continue that seven days a week. You can't physically do that and you'll crash and burn. Just take a step back, do a weekly show like everybody else is doing, and make that happen. And for me, it was great advice. And these people who I am still friends with to this day, very much so, Cliff Ravenscraft, the podcast answer man. Jamie Tardy, my first mentor, speaking here today, 
they gave me this advice and they gave me other advice. And a lot of that other advice I took and I implemented and it's one reason why Entrepreneur Fire was successful out of the gates. But for that specific advice, I was determined that I was gonna focus, I was gonna put my blinders on because I believed in my vision. So for people that are out there in the audience that have a vision and you have friends, family, mentors, all who love you and are, care about you and they're trying to give you advice, you do want to take that advice in. But at the same time, you want to weigh it against what your heart's telling you. And what my heart was telling me was there were other people out there like me who wanted to consume more content on a daily basis. And I put my blinders on just like they put blinders on the horses so they're not scared when they're coming out of the starting gates. Like that is really what I had to do despite all this great information that was coming down from really knowledgeable people. So consistency, and this is huge, <clears throat> because what we're all looking to do, and I'm gonna keep coming back to this word audience, because that's how I want you to feel when you leave here today. I want you to feel like you can build an audience, like you can build your audience. Because if you can build your audience, there's so many things you can do, and there's so many ways to build that audience. And consistency is the way to do it. For me, it was Entrepreneur on Fire. It was pledging that I was going to come out with that seven-day-a-week podcast and then never letting my audience down. So my audience knows every morning they can wake up, pour their cup of coffee, download Entrepreneur on Fire, and then take their drive to work or take their morning jog or walk their dog or go full laundry or any of the number of things that people do when they're listening to audio content. And I keep my consistency up. And so your audience begins to know, like, and trust you as a content provider, as a leader in your industry, in your niche for whatever you are doing. And so consistency is a word that is so underutilized and underspoken about in today's time. And if we don't know when that next podcast is coming out, when that next blog is coming out, when that next product is coming out, if we don't know as an audience, we start to doubt and we start to wonder if it's worth our time to log in, to go hit the update button and to see if it's there for us because we've been trained that maybe it's not and then our time has been wasted. So willingness to fail daily. And that was where I was when I was sitting in the audience a year ago today. In this very room, in this very auditorium, I was not sure that I was willing to fail because I had gone out on a limb. My career prior to Entrepreneur on Fire was an officer in the Army for eight years. After that, I was in commercial real estate. I was in corporate finance. I went to law school. All of these different things did not lead to podcasting and to interviewing entrepreneurs around the world who I didn't even really relate to that much. And I was not sure I was willing to fail because up to that point in most of my ventures, I had been successful to a degree. And here I was pronouncing to my friends, my family, and anybody else who would listen that I was coming out with a podcast that I had no idea if it was going to succeed. And I was scared about that failure. But when I look back now and I realize I should have been embracing that fear because that fear of that failure is really what we need to be looking for. We want to, we want to be failing on a daily basis. We want to be going from failure to failure to failure because that's how you're going to get to success. There's no straight line of success. I've only got to Entrepreneur on Fire and to the success that I have there by failing all along the way. And I'm only going to continue to grow my brand by continuing to fail every single day. So I've learned to not only embrace failure, but truly to want to fail and to want to learn from my failures. Just like I have on my show, Entrepreneur on Fire. What is your failure that you want to share with Fire Nation today? Because I want them to talk about a time that they failed. I want them to be vulnerable and show the audience that it's okay to fail and that the lessons that learned from that failure are what propelled them to their future successes. So once again, and I'm gonna keep coming back to this because this is what's important to me about the time that we have together today. How do I want you to feel when you leave this room today? I want you to feel like it's okay to make a pronouncement, to make a bold pronouncement about what you want to do, about what you're passionate about. I want you to feel like it's okay to fail after you made that pronouncement. And in fact, it's expected because you need to fail to start as the reasons I all went over on the last slide. And that's something that I continue to do on a daily basis, but your willingness to fail on a daily basis is really what's going to allow you to hit that go button and to start your journey. So I really want you to feel like you can take action and accomplish great things. Because again, when I was here, I wasn't sure I could accomplish great things. I didn't think that 
it was Entrepreneur Fire was going to click with people. I, I hoped it was. I didn't know. I didn't think. I just hoped. And it was kind of a, a prayer, like so many entrepreneurs start with. It's just a hope and a prayer. And I didn't know if it was going to click. I just hoped it was. I want you to feel like you can build an audience. Because every single person in this room, every single person, can build an audience. And it doesn't have to be massive. It doesn't have to be small. It doesn't have to be medium-sized. It can be any or all of the above. It just it has to be an audience that you're leading in whatever niche that you're passionate about, in whatever area that you want to be looked at as a subject matter expert. That's what's important. That's where you want to be building your audience. And for me, I was passionate about talking to entrepreneurs, so I wanted to be the authority figure podcasting, interviewing some of the most successful and inspiring entrepreneurs in the world. That was what I was passionate about doing. That was the audience that I wanted to build, people that wanted to listen to that message. So what audience do you want to speak to? It doesn't have to be a large one. I have a friend in the audience right now who has a podcast for lawyers, and that's who she wants to speak to. She wants to speak to lawyers, to the people that are in the profession of law, and she's not looking to, to, to talk to everybody. Not everybody wants to listen to a podcast about law or about law school or about things, but enough people do. An audience does, and you can build off of that. I was going to make people guess that. <laughs> Build your audience. Yes. I have a prize for you. <laughs> so my three key words for the day. And I am kind of hammering this point home because going back to my original quote, Maya Angelou, people will forget what you say. They will forget what you do. And that's okay because they won't forget how you make them feel. And the only thing I want you to, to, to leave today is feeling that you can build your audience in your niche in any way that that is. Just feel that that's the truth. With determination, with consistency, by failing, by taking action, all this is true. So I use podcasting to grow my niche, go ahead. But that's not the only way. There's blogging, there's video, there's social media, there's e-commerce, got one more. There's brick and mortar. There's rape hair in the room. Maybe not. One of my friends thought he was going to be at the conference today. He's running a great company here in Maine called Dauphin. It's brick and mortar. It's making dog beds and dog bowls. And I've bought numerous products from him. And it's a great company. And brick and mortar. And he's building an audience that way. So all of these ways are ways to build audiences. And there's many more. These are just some ways to build an audience. Podcasting is a great method. And it's one that I've used. And as I say in the next slide, find your medium. I have found mine. Entrepreneur on fire, go ahead. So here are the steps that I took. And this is where I, where I really want people to kind of step back and kind of put yourself in this situation because this is really going to be a step-by-step -step model of how I built Entrepreneur on fire, the steps that I took, and then how you can implement steps like this, similar to this, or exactly like this, as you're building or continuing to build off of your brands, building your audience. So I decided upon my niche, number one. I created my avatar, <coughs> number two. I found a mentor, number three. Joined a mastermind, number four. And then I took action. So I'm going to break down each one of these. And the next five slides are of each of these. So the niche. My niche for Entrepreneur on Fire is a seven-day-a-week podcast where I interview the most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs in the world, and I share their journey with people that want to listen to that whenever, wherever, for free on-demand, targeted content. So that was the niche that I wanted to fill. I saw that it wasn't being filled. That void was not being filled. And I wanted to fill that void because I wanted that podcast to exist, and it didn't. So I created it. What do you want to exist out there right now that doesn't exist? That's an opportunity. So an avatar. And this is really important. And this isn't like the movie Avatar where the person's like in blue and they're flying. <laughs> This is actually your avatar. And for me, I was fortunate because I was my own avatar. And an avatar specifically is that perfect individual for your brand. Not males 20 to 46 that live in the Northeast that you know, like to go running. That's not an avatar. That's a demographic. An avatar is one person. 
Like, Nathan O'Leary is one person. He's an avatar for somebody. I don't know for who or for what, but I know he's an avatar for somebody. So I was my own avatar. So this made Entrepreneur on Fire very easy of a brand to build because every single time I came to a fork in the road, and there were many forks, and there always will be for entrepreneurs, and every single time I came to one, I could go back to my specific avatar, male, 33 years old, drives a lot, goes to work, likes to go to the gym, and all these times consume content while he's at these different places, while he's walking his dog, while he's running, while he's folding laundry. <sighs> don't tell my girlfriend I said that. I don't fold laundry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's just so many different ways that you can create your, your avatar, but the important thing is to be specific about who that avatar is and really drill down into that avatar because you're going to always have those questions, those forks in the road, and it's really important to know which way to go during every single one. And again, if you really have your avatar down, not just a demographic, but a specific person, then you're going to know each and every way to go during that journey that you're on. So my mentor, the first thing I did, I was clueless. Picture Bambi, like a fawn in the middle of this huge meadow by himself, like nibbling on dandelions or something. I was by myself. I was clueless. I didn't know anything about podcasting. Nothing. I just knew how to press play on an iPod. That was it. I didn't even have a smartphone at the time. And so I knew that I needed to press the fast forward button because time is of the essence. I was ready to get going. So let's find a mentor. So for me, I was very fortunate. My mentor was in Maine. I was in Maine. Jamie Tardy, the eventual millionaire. She'd been a successful podcaster for a number of years. She's currently a speaker here today. You can watch her later. She's a great speaker. She's a great podcaster. She's a great businesswoman. And I knew that she would be a phenomenal mentor for me, so I emailed her. I reached out to her. I asked her to mentor me, and I knew it wasn't going to be cheap. And I knew I was going to be investing in myself, and I did, and I was willing to. And she took me on as a mentee, and I'm very grateful for that. And one of the first things we did is we went to a conference. So I commend all of you guys that are in the audience right now for being at this conference because that was my first step. I was coming out of the commercial real estate field. I had never been to a conference like this prior to deciding I wanted to podcast. So I went down to New York City to Blog Worlds. Jamie was keynoting down there. Had a great time. My, my eyes were opened by people who were on stage sharing their success stories, their failures, their journeys, and, and just their journeys as a whole. And I got to meet some amazing people like Pat Flynn, Derek Halper, and Cliff Ravenscraft, people who to this day are still very good friends of mine, and who ended up being the first guest on my show because at that conference, I went up, shook their hands, introduced myself, told them my vision, which at that time was just a vision. It was just a goal. It was just something I wanted to create, something that didn't exist at the moment. And they said, sure, John. When the podcast goes live, give me a call. I'd be happy to be a guest so that I could go back to my studio and use that social proof, say, X, Y, Z. Pat Flynn, Cliff Ravenscraft, Derek Halpern are all lined up to be on my show, Entrepreneur on Fire. Would you join me as well? And that allowed me to build up 40 interviews over the summer of 2012 before my launch date of September 22nd. That was the first step I took, all thanks to my mentor, amongst numerous other things, mindset, more connections and just really the actual X's and O's of running a podcast. So who's a mentor in your field? Who's somebody that you reach out to? Believe it or not, you can and should reach out to that person. And you should share with them what you're doing. Share with them that you are impressed and you really enjoy what they're doing. And ask them if they will mentor you. Or if not, if they can recommend a good mentor for you. Because that is a huge step. I'm currently being mentored right now. His name is Lewis House. He runs a great podcast called The School, uh, School of Greatness. And he does a number of other really cool things. And he helps me take Entrepreneur Fire to the next level because he's basically five years ahead of where I am, of where I want to go. And so I'm always looking to be mentored, just like I currently mentor four individuals as we speak. And it's something that I really enjoy doing. And it's this great circle that I really encourage everybody to look into. And the masterminds, huge, incredibly important. I joined Cliff Ravenscraft's podcast mastermind. I spent a full year in this masterminds. It was with 10 other podcasters. We learned a lot, we shared a lot, and we interacted with each other, and it was so important 
to help me get, get through some of the bumps in the road because they had either been there or done that or they were experiencing it. We could share successes and failures together. So the mastermind was huge. And then action. Daily and focused. That's key for me. It's daily and focused. Now, I'm not saying that anybody in the audience who just wants to start testing out or doing a side project with something they're passionate about, that's great. Wake up 15 minutes earlier, go to bed 15 minutes later, use those 30 minutes every day and get a little bit better and see where you're at in six months. That's a wonderful opportunity. But for those of you who are diving in full, full make sure it is daily and make sure it is focused. And make sure you're not really getting caught up with that bright, shiny object syndrome that's so prevalent and that happens every single day to me and to every other entrepreneur because there's a lot of exciting things going on in this world and there's more exciting things going on every single day. So this presentation is not about how to podcast. It's not. It's about how I've built my audience off of podcasting and about how you can build an audience off of podcasting and or any other area you want to go into. But it's about leaving here with the feeling that you want to take action, that you can take action, and that it's okay to take action and fail, that it's okay to take action and be scared, that it's okay to do all these things. But what's not okay is not taking action and not starting that road to building your audience. In fact, podcast launch is my book. It's got all the technical stuff about podcasting. So if anybody wants it, I'm gifting it. To everybody here at Agents of Change for the next 48 hours, you can get the PDF version, eofire.com slash AOC. The presentation here is too. So if anybody wants or has any questions about the technical aspects of podcasting, this book does have it all. It's the number one ranked book in Amazon on podcasting. So it will really answer any specific questions you have on that. Because that's not what this presentation is about. <coughs> but this book will get you there if you need it podcasting-wise. This presentation is about how to build your audience. So let's dive into that part. So when I first launched Entrepreneur on Fire, again, I had been an officer in the U.S. Army for eight years. I had been in corporate finance with John Hancock. <coughs> I had been in commercial real estate right here in Portland, Maine. I had no online presence. Raise your hand if you have a Twitter account right now. Okay, you're ahead of where I was on September 20th, 2012, because I did not have a Twitter account. I had no social media. I knew I was going to build all that, and I had a plan in place to do so, but I hadn't done it yet. I launched Entrepreneur on Fire with zero online presence. I had never done anything online prior to Entrepreneur on Fire, which is September of 2012. So I grew it with my business model, and my business model was very specific. I went in with a plan. That I knew I was going to be the first and only podcaster to actually interview seven days a week. So what does that mean? That means that every single Monday, to be specific, I interview eight entrepreneurs. It's back to back to back for eight hours. It's a very long day. I'm drained by the end of it. It's emotionally draining. It's physically draining. And I, sometimes I can't talk that well on Tuesdays. But again, my girlfriend doesn't mind that either. But... I interview eight people every single Monday, and I do that because I need the rest of the week to focus on other parts of running Entrepreneur Fire, the business, other parts of building my audience. I need to focus on that. So my first email out every morning, and this is my business model, it was this simple. Dear Seth Godin, dear Chris Brogan, dear Gary Vaynerchuk, dear Tim Ferriss, dear Rich Brooks, your interview just went live today on Entrepreneur on Fire. You shared an amazing journey with my audience. I'd be honored if you would share this journey with your audience. And so what is one thing that successful and inspiring entrepreneurs all have in common? They have massive audiences. There's a reason why they're successful. There's a reason why they're inspiring. So every single day, seven days a week, Entrepreneur on Fire would be shared with another entrepreneur's audience. A certain proportion of that audience would become listeners. A certain proportion of that audience would become subscribers. And a certain proportion of that audience would become evangelists and spread the love and continue to do so. So the snowball effect happens. Because this isn't once a week. This isn't 52 times a year. This is 365 days a year. 
I'm having a whole new set of ears and eyes exposed to Entrepreneur on Fire. And I'm doing that through my podcast. So you should be thinking of ways that you can be doing this through your brand, through your medium, whether that be blogging, whether that be video, whether that be e-commerce or brick and mortar. How are you getting in front of people, social media? June, 231,000 downloads. July, 308. August, 419. And for September, we're on pace for over 500,000 unique downloads in over 145 countries. And that snowball effect is continuing because every single day that same thing is happening. More people are being exposed to Entrepreneur and Fire. More people are being exposed to podcasting in general. And this is some of the other ways that I have grown. Guest appearances on other podcasts. I'm now averaging seven interviews on other podcasts every week. There's a ton of new podcasts that are going live all the time, and there's some older ones that are great as well. People are always looking for guests that have inspiring stories. So I'm often asked to appear on other people's podcasts. That's a great way to spread my brands. And that's all because I started the podcast. Guest blogging, socialmediaexaminer.com, Content Marketing Institute. I've been featured in both Inc. Magazine, today's Time Magazine, today's print Time Magazine, Features Entrepreneur on Fire on their podcasting article. This is how big it's getting. I mean, USA Today had a front page article about how podcasting is back and how it's booming. Time Magazine did an article about podcasting where they mentioned Entrepreneur on Fire and a couple other podcasts, maybe two. I think Joe Rogan's podcast and then a, a podcast about history. So this is an incredible exposure that Entrepreneur on Fire is garnering all because of the podcast. And then organic search. I know everybody in here has heard of YouTube. Five years ago, people just thought YouTube was a place that you went to watch videos. People now know that YouTube is the second most searched website on, well, let me rephrase that. That YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world, second only to Google, who owns YouTube. iTunes is on a, is on a similar trajectory. iTunes has 45 million people right now and growing exponentially every day that are visiting iTunes. There's a search bar there. They're searching for content. They're typing in social media. They're typing in SEO. They're typing in entrepreneur. They're typing in Seth Godin. They're finding entrepreneur on fire because of these searches. So what's your business? What's your demographic? What do you want to rank for or be found for? If you have a podcast and you have it correctly titled and the correct SEO, you will be found and you'll be opening up a whole new demographic and a whole new audience for you to build your audience. And again, this all res resulted, everything, from just starting a podcast that I was really questioning a year ago today if I was going to start. I was really saying, this probably isn't going to work. They're right. I mean, Cliff's the podcast answer man. Jamie's the eventual millionaire. How can they be wrong? Seven days a week's a bad idea. I shouldn't do this. But I did. So now I'll stop monetizing, and I'll go through this quickly because I know this, people don't care about this. <laughs> <laughs> so monetizing. Can you make money podcasting? Yes. Dollars and pennies. But the better question is, can you make money with the audience that you've created? Because that's where we're going back to. I'm going to show you how I make money podcasting. And I'm going to lay it all on the line. It's all transparent. In fact... Entrepreneur on Fire, starting October 1st, following Pat Flynn's model, is coming out with an income report. And we're going to show it all. Income, expenses, costs, everything. It's going to be out there every single month on the first of the month. Because I love Pat Flynn's transparency. I love how he does it for Smart Passive Income. And I want to bring that to the podcasting world. So yes, yes, yes. And eight ways that I generate income via podcasting. There's eight ways. And again, this presentation is eofire.com slash AOC. You can download it. Sponsorships, affiliate relationships, <coughs> products and services, masterminds, books, coaching, speaking, joint venture opportunities, and there are more. This is what I do. This is what I'm focused on, and it's a lot, but there's more. So sponsorships. Get a couple clicks I'm going on here. So currently, Entrepreneur on Fire is generating over $30,000 every single month on sponsorships alone. These are four of my, there's one more in here. 
These are four of my six current sponsors that I have. They're all very entrepreneurial focused. They're all great for entrepreneurs at every level. Everybody needs some legal help. Everybody needs some designs. Squarespace is a great place to build a website, to build an e-commerce site. I make sure that my sponsors make sense for Entrepreneur on Fire, and they're willing to pay top dollar for it. And I will break down the exact numbers. So again, this, this is called Six Months to Six Figures because I launched September 22nd, 2012, and it was six months later in March of 2013, six months almost to the day, that I locked down my initial sponsorships that was bringing in five figures a month. So it was almost six months to the day that I locked down Q2, April, May, and June sponsors, six full-time sponsors for Entrepreneur on Fire. So this is how sponsorships work. This is by the numbers. We will go through this fast because you will have access to this afterwards if this is something you're interested in because I know this is not something that everybody is going to be going down. But with sponsorships for podcasts, you have a 15 second pre-roll and a 60 second mid-roll. The industry standard, this is for Adam Carolla, this is for Joe Rogan, this is for Entrepreneur on Fire, this is across the board. You get $18 per 1,000 downloads, unique listens, and $25 per 1,000 for the mid-rolls. So for the 15 seconds, you're getting $18 per 1,000. For the 60 second mid-roll, you're getting $25 per 1,000. Entrepreneur on Fire currently averages 14,000 unique downloads per episode. The number is consistently growing, which is why my sponsorship revenue is also consistently growing. So you're gonna be multiplying everything here by 14. This is by the thousand, so go to the next slide. So the exact math, $18 pre-roll times 14, that's $252 for the pre-roll. 25 times 14 is 350 for the mid-roll. That's a total of $602 that each sponsor has to pay to sponsor one episode of Entrepreneur on Fire. I have two sponsors per episode, so that's $1,204 per show. And so at 100% capacity per month, Entrepreneur on Fire is, is generating over $36,000 for sponsorships alone because of the 30 episodes <laughs> I do. Another benefit of doing the seven day a week show as opposed to a weekly show. So affiliates are really huge, and this is something that I started monetizing almost immediately. Not to, a lo not to a big number, but I almost started within the first month of generating income through my podcast through affiliates. It took six months for the sponsors, and that started at about $12,000 a month. It has now grown to over 30. But with affiliates, Bluehost, Startup Blog That Matters, Lead Pages, Thesis Theme, this is something that you can start almost immediately when you have an audience. And this is not podcasting specific, this is an audience, so build your audience. Have people come to your sites, have people listen to you, have people want your recommendations for what they're doing. So when people come to me and say, John, I want to create an easy, an easy sales page, I point them to, to lead pages, and that's an affiliate of mine. And it goes on and on. So this is the audience and the importance of the audience to build. This is an example of my, my resources page, and this is what every single entrepreneur should have. When you're building an audience, when you're building a brand, you have your headquarters. And one thing that you're gonna have that headquarters is a resources page, because again, people are going to your site because they wanna hear what you have to say. They wanna see the content that you're providing. They also want your recommendations, so give it to them. Every single one of these is an affiliate link of something that I recommend that I use. And every single one of these companies offers affiliate links. So. Go back real quick. So every time somebody gets a book off of Audible, it's $15. Every single time someone signs up on Bluehost, it's $150. Six, six dollars every single time somebody takes How to Start a Blog That Matters. And these numbers start to add up after a while when you're really generating a large audience. And again, this is something to a small level I was monetizing within a month of starting Entrepreneur on Fire. So now products and services, and this is key guys, this is really important. I know it's getting close to lunchtime, but we're just gonna bring this home right now. So I get asked all the time, thank you for that, I really appreciate it. John, how do I know what products to create? I hear the Eric Ries Lean Startup model all the time. I, I think I know what the audience wants, but I've heard so many times that, that people stay behind these walls and they create something and they come out and they're like, okay world, here it is, and then nobody wants it. You hear crickets, and that happens all the time. 
It's happened to me. It will happen to me again. But not as often as it would if I didn't subscribe to this model, which is listening to my audience. Your audience will tell you what they want. They'll tell you what they need. So these are Entrepreneur Fire's products and services right now. We have Podcasters Paradise, we have Fire Nation Elite, and we have Podcast Launch. Next. So the questions that I receive daily, this is daily questions that I receive from my listeners. All of this. How do I create a podcast? Grow, monetize, rank, reviews, interview more, meet other podcasters. I get these questions all the time. And a light bulb goes off and it says, people need these answers and they need, this, they need a community. They need a community where these answers can all, where these questions can all be answered in the right way, not by me individually, but exactly how they need it and how they want it. So I've created a podcast's paradise as a response to these emails that I've gotten. And podcast's paradise is where you can create, grow, and monetize your podcast. And this is a response to the, my listeners telling me what they need, what they're suffering with right now. Because there's video tutorials, there's a forum so they can interact with other, entrepreneur, uh, with other podcasters and other entrepreneurs. They can engage other podcasters. They can find guests and get guest opportunities. We have webinars with today's top podcasters to share insider tips. All of this came not from within here, but from out there, from Fire Nation emailing me and telling me, John, this is where I'm struggling. This is where I'm having hang up, and this is where I'm having problems. I listened. More questions. I feel alone. I need accountability, someone to share ideas with, somebody to interact with, to share my failures and successes with. This is something that you guys will be hearing almost from day one when you start creating an audience. When people start to know, like, and trust you, they're going to start emailing you this almost immediately because this is a real problem out there in the world. And so this is my call to action for you guys. Create an audience. Create a mastermind for that audience. I've done so, and it's not difficult to do. When you are a leader in that industry, when you're looked at as an authority figure, when you have credibility and an intimate connection <coughs> with your listeners, with your audience, with your readers, you can do this. Enter Fire Nation Elite. We have a membership site with a forum, resources, and profiles, private Facebook group, monthly webinars, an annual meetup in San Diego, private email access to me, and there's more value being added all the time. Anybody in this room who has any semblance of an audience can start creating one of these right now. They can take, this is it, this is all we do. We have 100 members. Some of the members are in this room today, part of Fire Nation Elite. And this is, and this is, and this is what we do, and it's 100 members, we've capped it. I have over 400 applications now for Fire Nation Elite, and more come in every single day. But we're no longer taking applications, we're no longer taking members, because we're at our capacity for this, but this just shows the overabundance of need for a community like this, for a mastermind like this. And that's another five-figure a month revenue generator. That brings in over $13,000 every single month. Every month, recurring. The other question that I get all the time is, how do I podcast? And it's a great question, but I can't an an answer it individually to every single person. So I said, you know what? I'm going to sit down over one weekend and I'm going to write a book. It's going to be an ebook, and I'm going to have my girlfriend edit it, and then I'm going to publish it on Kindle. And that's what I did. <laughs> and enter podcast launch. And this is now the number one selling book on Amazon, and it was since the second week that I launched it because there was nothing out there. Nobody was willing to step up and write a book with authority on this subject. And you go to Amazon now, and you type in the word podcast, it's the first thing that comes up. And what does that do? That increases my authority in the subject. And number two, it increases my awareness. Because how many people around the world are going to Amazon and use Amazon on a daily basis? So many people, and that number's growing every day. Amazon's huge. And this is another way I'm being found. This is another way that you can be found for your niche, for your brand, for your whatever, is by doing something like this that took me a weekend to do, a bunch of video tutorials. I poured my heart and soul into it, but I didn't take 12 months to write it and get it published through an actual Wiley or a real publisher because it was more important to get out the best content I was able to produce in the time that I was willing to commit to it. And this has helped hundreds and thousands. This has thousands and thousands of sales. And it's helped that many people and more create a podcast and follow their dream and add that to their demographic. 
or make that the main part of their business. Other income streams we talked about that I mentioned, I'll just brush over. There's coaching, there's speaking, there's JV opportunities. I'm a coach. I coach four people. I'm, I have a coach. I have a mentor. I pay him. This is what we do in the industry. We always are looking to learn from those who have been there, done that, who have more knowledge than us. So once you have established yourselves as credible authority figures in your niche, you're going to have people that want to press that fast forward button, and they'll come to you. I get emails all the time. I can only take four people, so I have to point them in other directions. And I do. And I have great alternate coaches, and great things happen because that one-on-one -on -one coaching that we talked about is so important. JV, uh, speaking, three months after I launched Entrepreneur Fire, I was speaking in Blog World in Las Vegas in January of 2013, just three months after the podcast launched. I was speaking on stage at Blog World about podcasting, about Entrepreneur on Fire. I had really nothing to show for it, nothing to, but I had just taken action. I was unique. I was doing seven days a week. I was getting pretty good download numbers. I wasn't making any money. I wasn't doing anything special, but I was doing something unique. And people wanted to hear about it. And so I was speaking just three months after I took action. And it's there. And I have multiple speaking engagements throughout the year. I'm speaking in the Philippines, in Sydney, Australia, all over the United States over the next 365 days because it's subjects I love talking about and it's a message I love spreading and it's a great way to connect with people in a different way. Next. So in summation, once you've built an audience, you have many income streams, many income streams that are available. I've mentioned a lot of them. There's a lot more. But the key is that word audience. And I've hammered it into the ground now. So I want you to feel that word now. I want you to feel the word audience and know that you're leaving saying, I, I'm going to build my audience. Yeah, podcasting is a great way to build that audience. It's a great way for me to build the audience. And I was very successful in doing so, and we continue to work hard to continue to be successful to do so. And it's one great way. It doesn't have to be your way or the way, but it is a great way or a great addition to that demographic. But you don't even have to take my word for it. I'm just a guy that started a podcast less than a year ago. You guys might recognize him. He's actually wandering the halls as we speak, right here in this building, Michael Stelsner, founder of Social Media Examiner, which is like the number two <coughs> social media website in the world, second only to Mashable. He does a great social media marketing world event every, well, it's March this year, but it was April last year. And he was keynote at his own event. And he said, podcasting, bar nothing, in our study is the hottest thing in 2013, period. And this is coming from a guy who has a massive audience, and they poll them, 250,000 daily readers, and this is what the study told them. And there's other things the study told them too. I recommend checking that study out because there's other avenues that may be more appealing to you. But <coughs> podcasting is real, and it's something that's continuing to take off. I still get emails every single day of, John, I just wish like I'd missed the boat, like podcasting has arrived. And you never miss the boat. The boat is always there. It's just a matter of when you want to get on it and find your unique and different niche. Everybody has a different personality, a different take on things, a different way to do things. So find your different unique niche within that area. <coughs> so my question for you is, do you feel like you can create your audience? Because that, again, is the focus and the goal and my vision for the fruition of this time that we had together today was that you really feel like you can create your audience. Because once you start to create your audience, that snowball starts. And everybody knows what a snowball looks like rolling down a hill because we're either from Maine or close enough to Maine <laughs> to be here right now. So that's what I would like to end this with. And I know we're a couple minutes over, so I'll just um, pledge to you guys that I'll stay up here and answer any questions that you have. But anybody that's... <laughs>